in this world, you are either durable or you are vulnerable. You have been empowered as a believer in Christ by the Holy Spirit inside of you, not to be affected by the external pressures of the world, but to affect those pressures. Not to be tangled up in the trappings of the world and in life and all the stresses, but to rise above that and to affect in Jesus' name and in the power of the Holy Spirit those circumstances. Um, you are supposed to be more like a thermostat than a thermometer. You don't just are affected by the weather, but you actually, in Jesus' name, through the power of the Holy Spirit, can control that environment um, or at least affect that environment. God's the one that's in control, but you can, in His name, affect what's happening and be in control. So, um, we're in Acts chapter 3, and Luke is writing down the detail in Acts 3, and he records... Um, something that happens between Peter and John. Peter and John are walking up to the temple. They come across a man who is crippled, can't walk, and he always begs for money at the temple gate, um, at one, one of the gates of the city. And he, uh, he's asking them for money, and Peter and John said, look, we don't have money, but here's what we do have. In Jesus' name, walk. The man stood up, and Luke wrote down, he stood up on strong feet and strong ankles. Very precise details. So the feet and the ankles were the problem. And in Jesus' name, those problems were fixed. He no longer had weak and vulnerable ankles and feet. He had strong uh, and durable ankles and feet. And on those feet and ankles, he started to jump around. <laughs> you didn't just say that he was doing a shuffle. He was jumping around. This is the result of great expectations of God. I want to tell you something. You, you start a day with great expectations of God and see those uh, have those expectations of him in all of the moments. That's a much different day than when you start the day expecting very low things from God. So the Israelites were mind blown at what they saw. And then Peter faces the Israelites and he goes, why are you surprised? Why are you surprised? We didn't do this. Don't look at us like we did this. Jesus did this. And you know who I'm talking about. And he starts talking about the man, Jesus Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. He begins to connect it to Jewish culture for these Israelites. He talks about Abraham, talks about Moses, talks about Samuel. And in Acts chapter 3, he's making one point. He's like, look, you know that Jesus Christ came with us. You know that he died. He, he was sent from heaven to be our Messiah, and you killed him. You killed the author of life, uh, Peter says. He says, you, you even were given a choice, um, a murderer, Barabbas, a guilty criminal or Jesus, and you chose to let a murderer go free. And instead of the murderer taking the death sentence, you applied that to the author of life. So you honored the one who takes life and instead of honoring the one who gives it. Um, Barabbas went free, and Jesus took his place, and uh, Peter is, is, is hitting these Israelites pretty hard, but he does so with compassion. Um, he says, look, here's the thing. You did it in ignorance. Your leaders did it in ignorance too. And um, Jesus loves you anyway. So here's what you need to do. You need to be returned to Jesus for times of refreshing. And uh, you need to turn from your wicked ways and you need to repent. So this is not a message of Peter like slamming their face in their own guilt. It's, it's Peter giving them the facts about the situation and the fact that they are guilty. And he's saying, look, now you need to repent. Peter also said something similar in the book that he wrote, 1 Peter. And in 1 Peter, he said, we should always be ready to give an answer for what we believe and do it with gentleness and respect. Well, that's exactly what he's doing here in Acts chapter 3. He's saying, yeah, this is a problem, but you can repent. God wants to save you too. He wants to give you life and he wants to refresh your soul. And then the very last verse is turn from your wickedness. So Acts chapter 3 is a continuation of this, this, this book, Acts, the Acts of the Holy Spirit, as he empowers people to inject life into dead places. In talking, talk, talking about the author of life as a, as a source of refreshment to people that are dying inside. And you can just see the Holy Spirit's effect on all of this. And so let's continue to walk in their footsteps. And, and may we be as bold as they were to continue making Jesus famous. That's Acts chapter three, a strong encouragement for you to keep the faith against all odds. Thank you for doing the Bible together. I'll see you next time.